In this video I'm going to show you two ways for how to change the direction of a texture of your material on a specific part of your mesh. For example this part right here, if you ever wanted to have the wood grain go a different direction just on this part of the mesh but not anywhere else. And the way to do that can be done in two ways. One, to update your UVs on the mesh and the second way is to do it entirely inside Substance Painter. So let's cover both ways so you know how. The first part of adjusting and rotating part of your mesh, part of the texture on it, without affecting the entire mesh, is to rotate the UV shells that are needed. So for example, I want to take these wooden grain planks just on the corners to make sure that the rotation of this texture, of this material, is going the other way, going a different direction. Instead of horizontal, I want it vertical. And if I do this to the material right now, this will be applied to the entire mesh. So here I have natural pine wood, if I select it and I try to rotate it 90 degrees, it will work just on that part, but it will distort and mess up everything else. So to fix this, I need to go back to the original mesh, find the UV shells for the corners for these wooden planks and rotate them there and then re-export the mesh and re-import it back into Substance Painter. So let's do that. Here I have the Maya file seen open with uh, Supply Crate and the UV editor is open as well. I'm gonna switch over to UV shells so that way I can select the UV shells and know where they are within the UV layout. And here they are. They're all packed in right here. So I can select them inside the 3D viewport or once I know where they are, I can select them all inside the UV editor. And then I can just rotate them 90 degrees. So actually I'm gonna select these three first. Let's go to transform and I'm gonna rotate them 90 degrees here. And let me reposition these so they fit like so. And I need to do the same thing for these three. I'm going to select them all, rotate them 90 degrees, and reposition them. Now go back to object mode, select the entire mesh, and export it as my new selection. So I'm going to go to file, export selection, and export them into a specific directory where you can find it. If you have the original mesh, you should overwrite and save over that original mesh so you can quickly re-import. I, however, no longer have that FBX file, so I'm simply going to re-export it as a new mesh, and I'll just update it in a different way. But I'll show you both. Either re-import an updated mesh or import as a new mesh. So let me save this as FBX. File name is supply crate updated. My options are smoothing groups, smooth mesh both enabled, and just export selection. Then back inside Substance Painter, all I need to do is bring in that new mesh and then bake my mesh maps. So that way everything gets updated. If you overwritten an existing mesh that this mesh is already tied to, you can simply go to edit and choose reimport mesh. This will update with the mesh that you originally exported and if you overwritten it, it will just grab that same name mesh and update it with whatever changes you've made. I however no longer have this mesh, so to update it with a brand new mesh, I need to go to edit, project configuration and choose under file, select navigate where the new mesh is at, select it, and click open. And then click OK. It'll get updated. However, the parts for the mesh that I rotated the UVs are not going to match up. So in order to make them match up, without having to re-update or do anything to my layer stack, I need to bake my mesh maps so it kind of organizes everything I've done based on the new updates of the UVs. So I'm gonna switch over to bake mesh maps, F8. I'm gonna keep the same settings as before, when I originally baked the mesh, the output size is 1K and everything else is going to be the same and bake selected textures. Then let's go back to painting mode, F9. And here I've successfully updated the UVs for that wooden part of the corners of this crate to run in a different direction while still having everything else on my mesh how I had it before without messing with it. Now you can see on this part it didn't update, that's because I was just doing it very quick and I didn't double check all the UVs. But now you know how to do it, so you would do it more accurately, more precisely, double checking everything that you needed to select to rotate. So that's the first way of updating your mesh and parts of the mesh to have the textures be rearranged and go a different direction without messing with the rest of the mesh. The second way of rotating and reorienting direction of parts of the material without affecting the rest of the mesh, is can be done entirely in Substance Painter. So let's say you no longer have the original mesh or you don't want to leave Substance Painter and you want to do it entirely in Painter. So to do this, I would need to duplicate the original material that's being used 
and then mask certain parts of those UVs out and then rotate to change the orientation and the direction of the second duplicated material while not affecting the original material that I was working with. So here's the natural pine wood that I'm using that's applied to the entire mesh. I'm going to duplicate it by selecting the layer, press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V. This will give me a duplicate. You can also right click on it and choose copy layer and paste layer. Then here's my second one. Let me rename it to two. Now I have two materials being applied on top of each other. I'm going to right click on this layer and create the black mask. So it effectively hides everything for this layer. Next for this black mask, I'm going to select it and switch over to polygon fill, which is this icon right here. Shortcut key is four. Then once you have the black mask selected and you have the polygon fill enabled in the properties menu, you'll have access to defining which parts of the mesh you want to apply this new layer, this new material to reveal this color and this information. So we have triangle fill, polygon fill, mesh fill, and UV chunk fill. And we can use any of these, but the most effective ones for this mesh, the way it was created, we can do mesh fill because these wooden planks are individual meshes that were just combined with this entire supply crate as one, or we can use UV chunk fill because we know these are separate UV chunks. So we can use one or the other. So let's do mesh fill. I'm going to select it. And with it selected, I'm going to left click on the meshes that I would want to change the rotation and the direction of the material. Now it's going to appear exactly the same as before, but we're not revealing it. You can see right here in natural pine wood, we are revealing it. So I can just left click on all of them. Might be hard to tell what it's doing. So in order to see if it's actually changing anything as you were selecting it, let me go back to the material itself. And then now I'm going to change the rotation to 90 degrees for the second material. So you can see now it changed out and we can go back to the black mask and continue using our mesh fill. If the mesh fill is not working, you can see that I'm kind of selecting some other parts. Maybe we want to do instead of the mesh fill use poly, uh, UV chunk fill. So if I want to undo what I just did, I can simply change the color selection from white, which will reveal everything within the black mask to black and just uh, kind of refill everything. So the black mask is now invisible for all parts, or I can right click on the black mask and just undo everything I did by clearing the mask. So it's now black again. And now instead of using the mesh fill, I'm going to use UV chunk fill. That way it'll give me a little bit more precise selections. And I can do this either inside the 3D view or I can do it in 2D view by pressing F3. And here are the UV chunks. Yeah, so I'm going to make sure I have UV chunk selected. I'm going to switch the color back to white so it's revealing. And actually let me switch over to F1 so we can see 3D view and 2D view together. And I'm going to left click hold and drag and just drag over those parts inside the 2D layer view. And you can see now I've rotated the parts of the texture that I wanted based on my UV selections. Let's go back to F2 for full 3D view. And now we've successfully rotated those parts of the mesh. Those texture parts are now oriented in the direction that I wanted to. And we stayed entirely in Substance Painter. So I created a second duplicated layer of the original material. And we are now hiding all of parts and then revealing the parts that we wanted to have the adjustment being made to. If you found this tutorial helpful and you want more techniques, tips, and knowledge of how to use Substance Painter in more detail, take a look at a complete Substance 3D Painter Essentials tutorial course I created. And we go through a lot more techniques on how to use Substance 3D Painter across 23 videos and 6 hours. The course is available right now for you to pick up and I will see you in there.